Cui libertate Christus nos liberavit. Peccatus sum cultis, cui libertus sum nihi, si dominum dominio divinum, si entras in virtut et tua, si dominum dominio divinis, cui confidum in domine, si dominum dominio divinis, si dominum dominio divinis, si dominum dominio divinis, si dominum dominio divinis, si dominum dominio Brethren, it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bound woman and the other by the free woman. But he who has of the bound woman was born according to the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are said by an allegory. For these are the two testaments, the one from Mount Sinai engendering unto bondage, which is Agar. For Sinai is the mountain in Arabia, which has affinity to that Jerusalem, with his, which now is, as is in bondage with her children. But that Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren, thou bearest not, break forth and cry. Thou that travelest not, for many are the children of the desolate, 
more than of her that has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise, but as then he that was born according to the flesh persecuted him that was after the spirit, so also it is now. But what says the scripture? Cast out the bound woman and her son, for the son of the bound woman shall not be her with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bound woman, but of the free, by the freedom wherewith Christ has made us free. At that time, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is that of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw the miracle which he did on them that were deceased. Jesus therefore went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Pasch, the festival day of the Jews, was near at hand. When Jesus therefore has lifted up his eyes and seen that a very great multitude cometh to him, he said to Philip, When shall we buy bread that this may eat? And this he said to try him for he himself knew what he could do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread, it is not sufficient for them, that every one may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy that had five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are these among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in that place. The men therefore sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them that were sat down in like manner also the fishes, as much as they would. And when they, had their, and when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragment that remains, lest they be lost. They gather up, therefore, and fill twelve baskets with the fragments, and of the five barely loves which remains, over and above to them that had eaten. Now those men, when they had seen what a miracle Jesus has done, said, This is a true this is of a true the prophet that is to come into the world. Jesus, therefore, when he knew that there will come to take him by force and make him king, fled again into the mountain himself alone. This is just a reminder, Palm Sunday, the traditional Latin Mass will begin at 7 a.m. rather than 7.30. And next weekend, we will be collecting parishioner census information for a new parish directory. We will also be asking you to commit to sharing the gift of time and talents God has given you by serving as a liturgical minister or volunteering elsewhere in our parish. Please prayerfully consider where God is calling you to serve him. A Station of the Cross will be offered on Friday through April the 8th at 3.30 p.m. at St. Mary's. We invite everyone to join us, especially during this holy season, as we walk the way of the cross with our Lord. In today's Gospel, we can see how great is the compassion of the Lord. He filled pity for the people who were hungry, and he did a great miracle. But here, in our time, is a confusion. What is the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ? The miracle shows how much the Lord has compassion for people. But it is the, the duty, it is the mission of our Lord to put a solution for all the material necessities of the people Nowadays, there are many people who think that Jesus Christ have a purely human mission, 
So they, saw, they see Jesus not as God, but as a man had, who had need to give the people the welfare they need. And all this understanding Jesus Christ like a human person who came into the world to promote understanding, to fight the divisions, uh, not allowing wars between men. You know, um, trying to do the, the whole humanity a place more unified, even when uh, only one government, like some theories that are going around, all in harmony, under the human rights. But Jesus Christ is presented by all these theories like in a purely human way, without any transcendence. Jesus Christ did not come into this world to solve purely human affairs. Peace and harmony will come into the world when all men follow the teachings of the gospel. But the mission of Jesus Christ is supernatural. He came to save us, to guide us to heaven, to give us the uh, redemption of sin and save us from the devil, the true road to liberty, the true homeland that is heaven. Jesus Christ cannot see like, like, like a liberator, a revolutionary, a purely human, superhuman, we can say, because his mission is transcendent and divine. St. Paul in the letter to Colossians says, let your thoughts be on the things above, not on the things that are here below on earth. But sometimes we get entangled in so many things of this earth that we have the tendency to get attached to the things of this earth, even when in theory we have the ideas really clear in our minds. The things of this earth and fighting for them are not our goal. We need to do them, but our hearts, our minds, our look must be in heaven. All the hardships, all the sufferings, all the evil in this world are just reminders of how important it is to kindle in our hearts and our minds the looking for heaven, trusting in Jesus Christ putting into practice his words. The justice of man is a charade, or today, like always. The true justice is the, the one that is described in the Beatitudes, and it will not come by any man, only by the hands of God. The things of this earth do not fill our hearts and don't give the true freedom, the true joy, the Tari Sunday is a reminder that in the middle of land, in the middle of life, in the middle of this valley of tears, we are called to have joy. Jesus Christ came into this world. He teaches us compassion. He showed some miracles, and he said that they are blessed those who are merciful. But above all, he came for a, a reason, to teach us that we don't have a permanent city here below, that we need to look for the city in the future that is to come. We are in a walking church. This is not a definitive or the only one church that we have. We are preparing for the, the real and homeland that is heaven. And the roads have a lot of dangers, and we cannot live only by human hope. When the Lord was talking to the Samaritan woman by uh, the well, no? said that the Lord was fatigatus ex itinere, tired by uh, walking so much. Mm? And the Lord says to the Samaritan woman the, that the Lord could give her a water, a kind of water that it was going to jump into life eternal. And she never would 
thirsty again. All the things of this earth do not satisfy the longings of the heart. We need to walk on this world with some joy. We, we know that this life has some joys for us. But we have more a share of um, penance, sufferings, and failures. So why to put our hearts here on earth that is not our permanent city? Christians need to remember always that our hope is to find the Lord, to live with him, to be with him for all eternity. All the sufferings of this life have a sense for the Christian because it's a way to share the life, the destiny of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of that become a glory for us. Even death with Jesus Christ changed completely of sense because we unite our deaths to the death of the Lord, our Lord. And that is glorious. It's a victory. That is the entrance in heaven. It's our homeland. Remember the Lord talking to Martha and uh, Mary, her, her sister. Only one thing is necessary, to be with the Lord. Remember once the mother of the CBDs was asking something of the Lord. And the Lord says about that, you don't know what you're asking. Because that woman was thinking in a human way. She was thinking about power, human power. And Jesus Christ offered these two uh, brothers the suffering out of love for Jesus Christ. That is a complete contrary perspective of the world, the meaning and of our mission here on earth. We live in the world, but we cannot get discouraged or lose our north, that we need to convert ourselves and we need to convert the world, but always put it our trust in the Lord. No human being is going to bring what the Lord brings. Jesus Christ is compassive. He came to, to do some miracles and to give food to the people, peace and all of that, but his main mission is to convert us and to lead us to heaven. All the things um, that are described in today's gospel, you know, giving food to the people, that the people want to do him a king. That could come by itself if we could leave the gospel and we were good enough. And a, a, a beautiful detail in today's gospel that is a call and a challenge for all of us. The Lord could solve the problem because of the generosity of only one young person, a young man, who give the solution for all the problems that the Lord wanted to solve in that moment. The Lord do not need that, but Jesus Christ want us our help, want our help. A special consideration of, of the Lord in favor of young people to save the world, to save the church. A new a youth people who could come and change the existing church, the existing world. Sometimes we think that this generation have no solution. And the Lord is calling to renew his church, the young people, the young in heart. I write to you, young people, because you are strong and you have conquered the evil spirit, says St. John. So here's the solution. These young people need to exist. We need to train them. And they will come in a big number. Those that are described, eh, like, I have a spare for myself, says the Lord. 7,000 that have not bent the knee to Baal. Young people with a fresh heart, strong and pure, ready to sacrifice their lives for finding the solution. Generous people, eager to deliver their lives for the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ. To live in this world, but do not be contaminated by the world. Who love the justice, but the justice that our Lord Jesus Christ can bring. These people is the one who are going to bring the renewal to the church. 
So what to do? Live with the same spirit that is described in the second, second letter to Corinthians. The Christian life on earth is not easy, but man is called to have that perfect joy through suffering. Because we suffer, we can find true joy. The letter to Corinthians says, we prove ourselves authentic servants of God by resolute perseverance in time of hardships, difficulties, and distress. When we are flogged or sent to prison or mobbed, laboring, sleepless, starving, in purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the word of truth, and in the power of God, by using the weapon of uprightness for attack and for defense, in time of honor and disgrace, blame or praise, taken like imposters, and yet we are genuine, unknown, and yet we are acknowledged, dying, and yet there we are, alive, scorched, but not executed, in pain, yet all fills with joy, poor and making many people rich, having nothing, but yet owning everything. How beautiful is that part to remember for our time. Tan cuan ni laventes et omnia possidentes. Like having nothing for the world, but possessing everything the world needs and the hunger of God. Eh? So the world is still that valley of tears. But not all of tears are bad. There is a kind of tears that are so good. The gift of tears. Those tears that come from a heart that is profoundly in love with Jesus Christ. Please stand.
Gomini, Sitzember, Bob Eastbourne.
Pacio, ellos inquidipson, y lo que hay en en tribus, tribus domine, incompetendo nomine tuo, domine. Dominus Bobiscon. Oremos. La novispo es unos misericordios, usante tua, quibus insensator ex premur, sin ser distractemos obsequit, et fideli semper mente sumamos, per dominum nostrum, Jesum Christum, filium tuum, qui ce condire reina, inuita de Spiritus Santi Deus, peronia secula seculorum. Dominus Bobiscum, item Isa est, Of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph. 